Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Locum23. You're joining me for choices of stories you play. Freshman Book 1, Chapter 8, On the Hunt, Diamond Edition! After a short drive, the car comes to a stop, and Becca kills the engine. You hear her heels clicking over the asphalt as she walks around to the trunk. Up at Adam Pledges, Hell Week starts now! Could someone please just take the back off my head? You feel someone grab your arm and haul you out of the trunk. The ground changes from asphalt to wet, dewy grass. You struggle to keep your footing with zero visibility. Finally, a hand grips the top of the bag and roughly yanks it off of your head. Where are we? I think we're still on campus. Obviously... Are you going to tell us what we're doing here? And why you felt it was necessary to kidnap us in the middle of the night? Speak when spoken to, Pledge. Oh, being fun and being in charge is fun. It's tradition. Kappa Psi Sigma has done things this way for generations. Now, your first challenge as Pledge's will be to find the monogrammed cashmere sweater of our founding sister, Trixie Cartwright. May she rest in peace. She was everything a Kappa sister aspires to be, poised, sophisticated, and unfailingly chic. So, you want us to find some dead girl sweater? This doesn't involve grey bombing, does it? Oh, no! She left her beloved sweater as an official Kappa Psi Sigma heirloom! You just need to follow the clues scattered around campus to find its resting place. The first team to return the sweater will move on in pledge process. Everyone else will be eliminated. Ooh, a scavenger hunt! I call Abby and Mizumi for my team! Very well. The first clue is... Beckon furls a scroll, tied with a ribbon, and reads it aloud. For early mornings, or all-nighters, this is the home of wary writers. You have two hours to return the sweater to us at Kappa Psi Sigma House, starting now. As the other pledges split into teams and set off in the opposite directions, you, Abby, and Caitlin... Put your hand, heads together to puzzle out the clue. For early mornings or all-nighters, this is the home of weary writers. So it's somewhere weary writers hang out when they're tired? That must mean a <laughs> uh, library, dorms, the cafe. Get it? When you're up late writing something, you meet coffee. The next clue is at the cafe. Ooh, that makes total sense. Gotta get that caffeine boost. Nice one, Mizumi. Let's go pay Brandon a visit. And figuring we're the only ones who have this clue, we win. I mean, what? <laughs> the three of you head to the cafe and push through the door. Brandon looks up at the as the bell jingles. Evening, ladies. Looking for Zack? Ah, uh, is he here? Oh, hey, guys. We agreed to study together, right? You're about to object, but Zack gives you a meaningful look. Ah, uh, right. Let's do some studying. You and Abby grab seats with Zack while Caitlin snoops around, looking for the next clue. Zack, what's going on? Why are you here at two in the morning? I came here to talk to Brandon, but then I took it out, and I said I came here to do some late-night studying. And if I leave, he'll know I was lying. Can, you know, help maintain my cover? I guess. Brandon walks over to your table to check up on you, just as Caitlin comes back from the bathroom, shaking her head to say she couldn't find the final clue. How's our study going, Zach? Oh, it's, uh... It's, it's 
going good. L learning a lot about uh, vol volcanoes. Oh, I didn't know Art offered a volcano class. Yeah, 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 it's an independent study type of thing. What's this music, Brandon? I like it. Oh, it's just by this producer called Wizard Brain. I think he's actually doing a show in town soon. Oh, really? Zack likes music. So me? What? You do? Well, if you ever finish stunning, let me know. I've been looking for someone to go with. Oh, yeah, that'd be awesome. By the way, Caitlin, it looks up from serendipitously searching the trash can. I'm not doing anything weird. If you're looking for the next clue, Madison came in here earlier and tried to hide something in the coffee beans. I went to see what it was after she left. Here. Brandon hands you a scroll tied up with a ribbon, just like the one Becca read from before. Thanks, Brandon. All right, team. Let's see where we're going next. You untie the scroll and flatten it out on the table. Fear not that you've gone astray. The next clue's just a click away. What the hell is that supposed to mean? It sounds like, to me, the next clue is one kilometer from where we are now? Okay, I want this mouse to be the kilometer where the coffee shop. Kilometer from where you are. So, that could be anywhere in a 360 degree radius. Come on now. On the internet. Somewhere in the computer lab. The next clue is only a click away, like a mouse click. Oh, that must be it. Maybe it's one of those computers or something. You're pretty smart, huh, Mizumi? I try. I try even harder with you, wing wing nut nut. <laughs> You're off to the campus computer lab to find Tyler and some other, some of his gamer friends seated at a cluster of computers, their screens glowing with digital warfare. Hey, guys, mind if we interrupt? Win the last round of a platinum qualifying match, so yeah, we mine. Uh, sorry about it, Mizumi. We'll be done in a second. Does anyone have eyes on the enemy? They took out my scanner. I'm totally blind here. I'm watching the stairwell, no movement. Oh crap, oh crap, oh crap! They're taking the control point! I need backup in here! I got you! On the left screen, a squad of space marines disintegrates in a hail of laser fire. Leela grins and cracks her knuckles. The scoreboard flashes victory. Good game. Platinum, baby! The trip man can't be stopped! Right, because you did so much. Mm. Damn, Leela. No mercy. You destroyed those guys. Hey, you provided the distraction? We made a good team. Lila gives Tyler a playful punch on the shoulder, and he looks up to meet Abby's gaze. Uh, we, yeah, we, we, uh, good, good team, yeah. Well, anyway, we're doing a scavenger hunt to get into Kappa Psi Sigma, and we think the next clue is in here. Maybe on one of the computers. Have you guys seen anything? I found a file named kps.txt that definitely wasn't here yesterday. KPS. Kappa Psi Sigma. That must be it. What's it say? Homing now. Oh, weird. It's some kind of rhyming copulet. Man, when this turned into a poetry jam, I'm outie. Good for you. Bye. Go ahead and read the clue, Mizumi. The final clue is close at hand, in the desk of a Melville fan. Well, Melville might refer to Herman Melville, but maybe it's in a literal literature professor's office? Professor Vasquez is the head of the literature department. The clue must be in his desk. Nice solve, Tyler. You're like, so smart. Abby makes a gagging noise. <coughs> As Lila stares adorably at Tyler, 
Caitlin gives you a sly look and leans over to whisper to you. That Layla girl is all over Tyler. Once we leave, she'll have plenty of opportunities to get her claws into him. We should invite him to go along so he can spend time with Abby instead. Come with us, Tyler! Come! Really? I mean, I'm not really busy, so... Tyler looks to Abby for her approval, and she smiles slightly. Well, you'd definitely be more useful than these two idiots. Whoa, Abby. Attitude? So, I, I guess I'll see you later, Tyler? Yep, he'll see you later. Bye! <laughs> Bye! Holy shit. <laughs> oh, Caitlin, your ass, but I love it. Caitlin grabs Tyler's hand and leads the three of you out of the computer lab, leaving Leela and with Edgar. Round two? Tyler and Abby's relationship will be affected. You step into Professor Vasquez's darkened office and head for the big mahogany desk at the far end of the room. Why is it so messy in here? Couldn't he get you and James to tidy up the place or something? Oh, thank you, Caitlin, for the suggestion. Uh, don't give him any ideas. You're apt to pull open the desk drawer when you notice a crumpled piece of paper on the floor near the trash can. Huh? You pick up the paper and crumble it, and the heading at the top catches your eye. Dearest Gabriella. Ooh, Gabriella, sexy name. An old fling, perhaps? Should we be reading this? Probably not, but when does that stop Mizumi? Hey! What? What have I done something like that? Oh shit, Becca. That's right, the diary. Damn it! <laughs> you read through the text, the letter, and your breath catches in your throat. Not an old flame. I think Gabriella is his daughter. I know I wasn't the best father to you, but none of us can know how much time we have left on this planet. When you're ready to forgive me, I'd like to be a part of your life again. Whoa, that was intense. He didn't send them? I... I guess not. I wonder why... Just then you hear the shuffling of footsteps in the hall. Outside, your eyes go wide. Shh, Vasquez! Time for evasion action! Quick, Tyler! Run at the door! <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Technically, he is expendable. You duck behind the desk as the doorknob turns, peering out from behind the corner. You see James silhouetted in the light from the hall. Hello? Is someone in there? You sheepishly come out from behind Vasquez's desk. Just the night crew. Hey, James! What are you guys doing here so late? Scavenger hunt for Kappa Psi Sigma. Any chance you could not tell Vasquez we snug in here after dark? Your secret's safe with me. Thanks, James. I'll see if I can make it up to you sometime. Wait, what are you doing here? I left the script for my play here. I wanted to get some work in it. Isn't it a little late for writing? No such thing, Mizumi. Right. I forgot who I was talking to. I'll let you focus then. Much appreciated. After James leaves, you and your friends quickly rifle through the drawers and find the final clue tucked inside the front cover of a Moby Dick first edition. Herman Melville, you were right, Tyler. Tell me something I don't know. Oh my god. The end is near. You're closing in the sweaters on a mannequin. That didn't even rhyme. The sweaters on a mannequin? They really got lazy with the last one. Do we have to go looking for a mannequin when it's this dark? That's so creepy. Tyler will protect you, right, Tyler? Actually, I'm with Abby on this one. Mannequins scare the crap out of me. I know, right? 
Well, we have to find it either way. And we should look for it at the campus fashion studio, at the mall, at some kind of abandoned warehouse. Right. Uh, at the fashion design studio? Because it looks like all this is staying to the campus where the Kappasai girls have easy access. That's the only place they'd be. Makes sense to me. Let's go see if the studio's unlocked. Okay, but I'm gonna wait outside while you, you willingly step into its lair. Same. Okay, be good, you two. Or don't. Ugh. Caitlin. <laughs> a short while later, you find the mannequin wearing a monogram sweater with the initials TC. Trixie Cartwright sweater. It's even pinker than I imagined. Let's get it back to its rightful home. That's probably my cue to leave, but this was pretty fun. Yeah, it was cool. We should, y you know, hang out more often. I like that. See you back at the dorm? For sure. Abby, why don't you go with him? Shh, go away. Abby nervously gives Tyler a hug, and you and Caitlin raise eyebrows at each other. Bye, Tyler. Bye. As Tyler walks off towards your dorm building, you and Caitlin immediately start teasing Abby. Crush alert! Crush alert! Who's going to be your maid of honor, me or Caitlin? When are you two going to give us grandchildren? We're not getting any younger, Abby. Oh my god, stop. So embarrassing. Let's just bring Becca and Madison the stupid sweater, okay? The three of you arrive at Kappa Psi Sigma sorority house. Trixie Cartwright's sweater in tow. Beck and Madison welcome you in, and the other sororities clap politely. Well done. I was hoping it'd be you three. You were? I'm trying to be nice, Mizumi. Don't test my patience. Right. Sorry. Madison, would you be a dear and text the other pledges? Let them know we won't be requiring their presence at the rest of this evening's activities. I'd be happy to. They're all just disqualified? They didn't bring me the sweater, did they? Rules are rules. So, what are these activities you mentioned? Oh, we have quite the evening plan. I assume you know all know how to play. Truth or dare? Yes! I'm so down! Seriously? What? Obviously my truth or truth game was genius, but that doesn't mean I don't love a good dare. Never change, Caitlin. Never change. No shit! I love a good truth or dare game. I used to play that a lot when I was younger. It was fun. It was really fun. Sue, you, Abby, and Caitlin are lounging on soft pink pillows, enjoying glasses of red wine with the sisters of Kappa Psi Sigma. Candles flicker on the coffee table as Becca goes over the rules. As you all know, the rules are simple. You can choose truth or dare, but there's no backing out once you've chosen. And it goes without saying that the sisters of Kappa Psi will not be answering any truths or prefer any, uh, performing any dares. This game is purely for our amusement pledges. What? That's so unfair. Sorry, Abby. That's what it means to be a pledge. Let's start with... Mizumi! Okay, truth. Hmm. Okay, got one. How do you feel about Becca stealing Chris right from out under you? Because, like, I'd be pretty sad. That's how you're gonna start? Uh, it's not like Becca and Chris are even a real couple. Just give me a few more weeks and we'll fix that. Uh-oh, I guess I made things super awkward. You don't have to answer, Mizumi. No, it's fine. 
Hmm. I kind of feel bad for Becca. I'm pissed, obviously. I'm over it. Part of me wants to answer I kind of feel bad for Becca, but I'm over it. Oh, that's great. Not that I need your permission or anything, but it was... I, I was a bit worried. Well, don't be, because I really don't care that much. Saying it aloud is the first step believing it. I'm proud of you. Okay, maybe it should be someone else's turn now. Good idea. We're all adults here. After all, let's keep this civil. Says you? Works for me. The next few rounds pass in a world of spilled secrets and embarrassing dares. Okay, Abby, I dare you to drink five spoonsfuls of hot sauce. No water breaks! Ooh, good one. What? No water breaks? Can't we talk about this? Nope, sorry. Three spoonfuls later. Oh my god, it tastes like actual fire! You're almost there, Abby. Just a few more. Soon it's Caitlin's turn. She refills her glass of wine while Becca thinks of a good deer. Okay, Caitlin, let's make things interesting. I want you to choose any girl in the room. Mmm. Caitlin shoots a mischievous glance at you across the room, grinning excitedly. Already chosen one. And kiss her. Wait. What? Uh Ooh, you are bad, Becca. I love it. So Um are you okay with this? Sure, but maybe just on the cheek? Really? <laughs> Let's think about this, folks. <laughs> I don't think so. Rules are rules, right? Right. Caitlin scoots over to your pillow and sits in front of you with her legs tucked under. Okay, close your eyes, I guess, or uh, keep them open. Up to you. It's just a kiss, Caitlin. Don't be so nervous. Okay, okay, sorry. Caitlin leans in, her face tilted slightly to one side, and kisses you gently on the lips. Ooh, get it, girl! You just had to ruin it, didn't you, Madison? You just couldn't let it just sit in silence while everyone's just... <gasps> oh, eh. you know, just... Now that is how you play Truth or Dare. Caitlin pulls away a furious blush reddening over her cheeks. She nervously bites her lip. Wow. That wasn't bad at all. That was definitely a good dare. That wasn't bad at all. Yeah. Maybe we should do it again sometime. Uh, just, just kidding. So, who's next? You know what? Let's let Caitlin ask Mizumi anything she wants. What do you think, Madison? I love it. Um, okay. Mizumi, how do you really feel about James? Like, do you like him like him? Whoa, James Ashton? That hot rich guy? James and Mizumi are just co-workers, supposedly. Oh, yeah, right. You don't just stay co-workers when your co-workers look that good. Honestly, he's definitely not. I just don't see him that way. Oh, really? Okay. Okay, what? Nothing, just okay. I don't believe it. There's no way you're not crushing on that guy. I've only seen him, like, once, and I'm half in love with him. You know, it's interesting you bring up James, since he's an upperclassman. What's that got to do with anything? 
well pledges? I was saving this reveal for after our little sleepover, but I may as well tell you now. The final challenge that you decide whether you're worthy of Kappa Psi Sigma is finding an upperclassman to bring you to our sorority ball tomorrow evening. In that case, Mizumi, it sounds like the upperclassman will specifically have to be James Ashton. What? You heard her. Show up tomorrow at the ball with James Ashton on your arm. Or not at all. Mm. Ah, it reminds me of uh, why Becca's such a biatch. Anyway, I hope you all did enjoy the video. Remember to like and share. We are, the last I checked, at 2,990 full subscribers. That's amazing. We are just six away from 3,000. I thank you all. Because we've got, I want to say, 98% of those subscribers in... Almost, I want to say, eight to ten months. So that's fantastic. I mean, I'm glad that I'm doing the content that you all love. I'm glad you're subscribing to the channel. And um, I'm glad we have such an awesome community. Let's put it that way. So without any further ado, if you wish to follow me on any and all social medias for when I update, um, feel free to do so. That is down there in the description. And then if you want to support my channel and all, for the low cost of a cup of coffee, feel free to do that as well with a GoFundMe or Patreon. And until next video, stay well, stay awesome, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.